So, like I said at the beginning of this chapter, there are three ways to represent the equation of a line. And each of those ways tell you something special about that line, or many special things. And you can do certain things easier with some types of equations versus others. Okay, so today we're going to take another look at another type of line called general form. Yay! Okay, unlike slope intercept form, you usually cannot tell the y intercept or the slope directly from something in general form. Once you start to understand kind of how it works, you can, you can kind of see what the slope and y intercept might be uh, after, you, after you gain a little bit of familiarity. But uh, determining it directly from the equation is not possible usually. Okay? Uh, so general form therefore has to be useful for other things. Okay? Uh, before I talk about what those things are, I'll just show you what general form basically looks like. Okay? It's as simple as A, B, C. Because oh. <laughs> there's an A, B, C. Okay? Uh, it looks like this. AX plus BY plus C equals zero. Some textbooks put it like this. Okay? Uh, this C is sometimes on the right side and sometimes it's on the left side. But in your book, I'm pretty sure they put it on the left side with everything else. Okay? A, B, and C are real numbers and are usually integers. In fact, all, I'll say almost always they are integers. What's an okay? integer? An integer is a positive or whole, uh, sorry, a whole number that's either positive or negative. Okay, thank you. Okay? So some examples of lines in general form include this guy right here, 4x minus 8y plus 3. In this example, a is 4, b is negative 8, c is 3. Okay. Another example is negative 5x plus 7y minus 2 equals 0, right? In this example, a is negative 5, b is 7, c is negative 2. And there's a third example down there, okay? You'll notice that these are linear. How can you tell that they're linear? Remember, we looked at ways to identify linear equations last chapter. The degree of each term is 1, right? And the variables are separate. So you know that they are lines. They're just in a different form. With me so far? Okay. Here's what general form is mostly used, used for, although there are other purposes. Uh, it's good for comparing it with other functions, which you learn about later on in uh, grade 11 and grade 12. Seeing something, seeing a line in general form and seeing other functions in general form give you uh, a nice way of comparing different types of functions, and you can see easily, okay, that's a line, and that's this, and that's that. Okay, just by looking at the their equations in general form. Uh, it's really nice for finding x and y intercepts. So you still can find the y intercept. We we'll just do it a little bit of a different x method. Intercept? Yes, x intercept where it crosses the x axis. Uh, depending on the circumstance, it can sometimes be easier to write the equation for a problem. That's what we call modeling. Okay, it's not modeling where you like run down the, <laughs> the runway with your with a weird waddle and no. Okay, modeling in math is taking a word problem and creating an equation that fits what's happening in that problem. Okay, and sometimes it's easier to do it with general form, depending on the circumstance. And of course, you can impress all your friends with cool math. Okay, uh, which is probably the most important thing. Right, that's that's basically why we learn anything. Yeah, impress your friends. 